It's Monday and week 13 of Super Rugby has mercifully ended. Joining me in studio is our sport editor Garen and chief writer Rob to let us know how the four games went. Thank you for sitting down with me again. Morning, Jen. Hello, Jen. Well, game one, Garen, why don't you take us through that? All four games were on Saturday, right? All, all four games on Saturday, you're correct. So the first, we'll the first game was the, the Lions. It was their second game on mm -hmm. tour up against the Highlanders in Dunedin. And as I predicted last week, they would lose heavily. But as I, you I, predicted. I, I, was, I was correct <laughs> with, the, the, with the final result, but it was a lot closer than I thought. Mm -hmm. At halftime, you know, it was 23-0 to the Highlanders. I thought this was going to be really, really ugly in the second half. But credit to the Lions, they really came back. And they perhaps should have actually won it in the end. It's, you wow. know, it's difficult to say. That was, it's certainly a game of two halves, mm -hmm. if ever there was one. 23-0 down, they came back to lose by a single point in the end. And they missed the conversion at the end. Fairly controversial. The Highlanders charged. The ref didn't let Elton Yanchis retake the kick. So they went down in their second match. They've now lost two on, on the trot. I did say they'd lose all four. So I'm still on track for that, to be correct. <laughs> but we have to give credit to the Lions. You know, I thought you know the second game in, in New Zealand, mm. tough place to tour at the best of times, that they would really get thumped. But um, they, they hung in there and they showed tremendous determination. They scrummed well again. That's been their con most consistent aspect of their play, I think, this season. Their tight forwards have really, really done well. I think the Highlanders probably put, took a bit of you know the foot off the gas, if you like. They made a lot of changes, perhaps a bit earlier than they should have. But credit to the Lions, you know, for losing by one point in the end. Rob, what was your take on the game? Well, Jen, I'm, I'm a little bit humbled by this one because the Lions uh, really put up a gutsy display. Mm -hmm. I, I had them losing by, I think, 19 points. Um, mm -hmm. And I was quite smug last week because I said they might lose by about 30 or so, mm -hmm. and, they, and they pretty much did. So I was sort of, you know, vindicated on that one. But this time I also had them losing reasonably heavily, and, you know, it was nothing like that. And full credit to them for that. The fact remains, they're still sort of slipping down that table. Mm -hmm. I think there's still a chance that they will end up as the, the bottom-placed South African side. Um, which obviously will be a will be a concern because I still have a, a little sneaky feeling that the, there's still a couple of victories perhaps left in the in the cheetahs and and stormers. So mm -hmm. um, and the, you know they had, their tour has still got a, a bit of a way to go. Um, but it really was the hard luck story of the weekend because they uh, they put up such a gutsy performance. It would have been a, a, a quite a famous victory. Uh, mm -hmm. It would have been their second successive Dunedin triumph, I think, Garen. So right. um, it's uh, it's a, a great shame that uh, they couldn't. And it, it, a little bit of controversy at the end about that. You know, did the the Highlanders charge? Too, too quickly, um, but Elton Yankee struck the ball pretty well. Um, so uh, you know, perhaps you couldn't really use that as an excuse. Uh, and they got a losing bonus point out of the game, which mm. was something. They did. They deserved at least that. All right. So good and bad news for the Lions. <laughs> <laughs> good. Why don't you take us through game two? Well, the second game didn't get much better for the, <laughs> from a South African point of view. You know, it was the top of the table clash between the Sharks and the Brumbies in Canberra. Always going to be a tough arm wrestle, and it certainly proved to be that way. I correctly predicted that the Brumbies would win, and they won 16-9, I think, in mm -hmm. the end. So the Sharks did pick up a crucial bonus point to keep them on top of the Siphon Conference and the overall standings. But it's really, really tight now at the top, and the Sharks really can't afford to lose many more matches because yeah. they, you know, they started off really well with this draw that was pretty unbelievable. All these games in South Africa where they banked points before they needed to go and tour. But they've lost one one and lost one now on their overseas tour. Not going to get any easier next week against the Crusaders, and they finish against the Blues. So they could see themselves slip certainly from the overall top spot as both the Brumbies and the the Chiefs close in on them. But it, it, it wasn't the greatest game to watch. But it, sort of as you expected, you know, there's too much to lose. So you don't want to try too many things on attack. You know, there was, they tried to throw the ball around a little bit, yeah. but it sort of got bogged down and it was a bit of like I said, an arm wrestle. Both teams having the odd chance. But, you know, Jake White's um, went back to Canberra where he coached the Brumbies last year to the final. Um, the Brumbies sort of had the final say, if you like, and they're the ones that left smiling as they emerged victorious. Rob, your take on it? Yeah, it, it was a terrible game to watch. It was uh, very, very tedious. Uh, you know, even you could sense quite a muted atmosphere at the ground. I and mean, even mm -hmm. the Brumbies fans didn't seem over the moon. You know, they, yes, they were very happy to have got a very important win, uh, which could just uh, be a, a key sort of determinant uh, in who finishes top and potentially gets that, that home final. So, of course, we could yet get a, a final at, at Canberra Stadium. Although, quite frankly, we could still get a home final in many, many yeah, places. Uh, the, the log is very open at the moment. Um, Sharks, uh, a big concern for me is the fact that they've looked so flat for a week. They haven't produced a, um, a really dynamic performance for probably, what, five or six weeks. Uh, yeah. and they've been eking out a few wins. Obviously, have now lost a couple as well. Uh, so the pressure is mounting. And it just, as he said, it doesn't get any easier. 
couple of little bright points. I thought John Daisel put up another uh, very spirited uh, physical performance for the for the Sharks. But Franz Steyn was um, very off his game at at fly half, and now big reservations about whether he's the answer as the box fly half, uh, even as an intermediate uh, possibility in June anyway. So uh, issues there, um, and the Sharks have got to decide uh, what to do in the in that sort of important channel for the the game against the Crusaders this week. So it, it's looking a little bit ominous for them at the moment, and mm. they really need to to get some vibrancy back in their game. Well, Rob, you weren't here on Friday, but so far, Garen, two out of two on your yeah. predictions. Going into game three. Uh, unfortunately, I got game three wrong. Oh, no. <laughs> so, you know, and, and this was perhaps the only upset of, of, of the weekend. You know, you had the Cheetahs at home against the Force. Mm -hmm. The Force, to their credit, doing really well in the Australian Conference and the overall standings. But they've flown all the way to Bloemfontein from Perth. You know, we've talked a lot about these home teams having the, the upper hand. Mm -hmm. And I really expected the Cheetahs to win. And I was really disappointed in the, their performance. They just looked very flat. They offered very little on attack, and they've really that's been the, the, the hallmark of their play of the season to date. You know, they throw the ball around, scored some fantastic tries. Billy LaRue has been their star player, and he was very, very quiet on the weekend. Equally disappointed, as Rob just mentioned, there's a bit of a fly of dearth at the moment in South African rugby. Johan Kursen had a perfect opportunity to sort of stake a claim, and he was very, very quiet as well. Actually, when he was replaced by Elga Watts, I thought Elga Watts actually added more to the Cheetahs' back line. So they went down to the force, the force now flying high. Mm -hmm. Back in, you know, in South Africa, we've talked a lot about how few games South African teams have won in Australasia. Australasia, I think it's one out of 16 or something yeah. now, and the overseas teams are now just piling up the victories in South Africa, so the force have you know, picked up another one for the Australasian teams, they now move on to, to Newlands to play the Stormers next week, which we'll talk about later in the week, <laughs> but you know, hats off to the force, they played really, really well, their defence was to be credited, they, they were determined to, to pick up the victory, and something the, the South African teams haven't really shown, and certainly the Cheetahs didn't show on on the weekend was this determination to mm. keep the opposition out. They sort of every time the the force attacked, they seemed to score. It mm. was as simple as that, really, for the, for the men from Perth. So bad result for from a South African point of view. All right, Rob, do you agree? Yes, uh, I thought that the uh, the Cheetahs' defensive alignment was so poor again. Uh, whenever the uh, the force, uh, you know, took the ball in hand down into the Cheetahs' 22, uh, you just sensed that they were going to score. If they had the necessary patience, they would score because somewhere along the line, uh, the the Cheetahs' defensive alignment would come out and, and it did. Um, it, it's a big problem for the Cheetahs, has been for some time. We know that they always traditionally uh, favour a, a really attack-minded game but uh, at times they've worked on their defence but it seems to have actually gone all pear-shaped again. Uh, so that was a really disappointing aspect for me. And the only hope perhaps is that they, they're going to save the best for the Brumbies game <laughs> which has now become a, a very important one. I mean the yeah. Sharks will be will be leaning heavily on the, the Cheetahs to, to knock over the, uh, the Brumbies uh, next weekend so hopefully the Cheetahs will uh, raise their game up and Notch because we all know that, that they are capable of beating anybody in Bloemfontein on a, on a good day. So hope springs eternal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now we're going to go into the last game. Okay, yeah. Did you get this prediction, Gary? I, I did. You know, <laughs> and from a certain so point humble. of view, <laughs> from a certain point of view, it was because it was a derby. We were always going to finish the weekend with at least one victory, and that's all we got. And thanks to the Bulls, they were the only South African team to win this weekend, so they kept their playoff chances alive. Um, sort of consigned the Stormers and the, and the Lions and the Cheetahs to also ran. So we've got two chances now, basically, of, of having uh, two teams in the six-man playoff, uh, six-team playoff mm -hmm. scenario: the, the Sharks and, and, and the Bulls. You know, the, the Bulls went down 12-0 early in the match. The Stormers really showed some tremendous firepower. I was really impressed by the tries that they scored. You know, we've said a lot about this, the Stormers' attack being woeful this season, but their two tries they scored, I think, were our contenders for tries of the season. So a fantastic start. But unfortunately, that from the Stormers' point of view, the Blue Bulls at home, you know, they stuck to their game plan. They knew what they were trying to achieve, and they just ground out the, the Stormers in the, the latter parts of the first half and the entire second half. They ran away a fairly easy 28-12 victors in the end. Mm. The Stormers not scoring any points after their early burst. So credit to the Bulls. Again, they didn't come close to scoring their four tries, which is a little bit of a worry. These bonus points, that just keep slipping away. But they, they're up to ninth now in the standings. They've got to get into the top six. Unfortunately from them, they've played 12 games, which means they've only got four left. 
And they really have to, as Rob said, rely on favours from other teams knocking over the teams ahead of them who have all played fewer matches. Rob? Yeah, it was a good derby. It was good to see uh, a decent game of rugby uh, in South Africa. I think South African fans have been aching to see uh, just a, a, a sort of a, a positive vibe from both sides in a, in a South African derby, which we certainly saw. Um, and as Garen said, the, the Stormers early on were incredibly uh, sort of fluid with the ball in hand. They looked really dangerous. But then the life was pretty much sucked out of them, as we thought it might happen. Their, their tight five was a very makeshift uh, uh, sort of you know, cobbled together selection uh, simply mm -hmm. based on who was, who was left standing from their, their vast array of, of injured players. Um, and it, it just began to tell more and more. The Bulls pack uh, sort of got a little bit of a rumble on and they started to dictate the field position. And in the end, it was, it was almost just a slow death for the, for the Stormers. They were, they were just, you know, ground into submission. Um, and after a spirited start, people like, uh, you know, Scott Berger, who I thought had had a, a terrific uh, opening stanza for, for the Stormers, uh, started to just lose a little bit of steam because they just couldn't get any traction. Um, and people like uh, uh, Paul Willemser, uh, I thought, uh, put up a really good show in, in the Bulls type five. Um, up against a really inexperienced uh, Stormers lock combination uh, who certainly looked uh, very inexperienced even if uh, there is promise down the line but just at present the Stormers are a vulnerable side and you can't really tell from one week to another whether they're going to going to win or lose that's just a sad fact of this transitional period for them. Garen did you have a most valuable player from the weekend? You know, as Rob just mentioned, Paul Willemsen, you know, he's coming to the Bulls second row at the expense of their skipper who's been banned, Flip from the move, he's been banned for three weeks. And I thought he was really, really impressive. Alongside um, Victor Matfield, mm -hmm. they formed a formidable second row pairing for the Bulls. You know, it wouldn't be out of place in the Springbok sort of setup either. Granted, they were up against a really inexperienced Stormers second yeah. row, but I thought he played really, really well. I was, I was most impressed with him and, and, and the whole Bulls pack of forwards, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think you agree. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, I'd also, perhaps an, an additional word also for the, the, the gradual development of Andre Pollard. Uh, he seems yeah. to be settling very nicely into that uh, sort of first choice uh, fly half berth. Now, I think uh, Jacques-Louis Porchita, although he's, he did a uh, yeoman work for the, the Bulls uh, as a sort of stopgap uh, a few weeks ago, um, I think for the moment, uh, with this, uh, uh, what Pollard has done is given the Bulls a new dimension on, on attack, um, which makes them a, a less predictable side. Um, and uh, uh, I think that they'll, they'll see the benefits uh, in the next few weeks of him just settling more and more into the position. He's also kicking his goals quite well. That's often been, sometimes been a little bit of an area of concern. But uh, so uh, lots of positives from the young fly half. All right, Garen, you didn't do as well this week as you did <laughs> last week. But can you let everyone know how they can challenge your predictions and share photos from the games if they have any? Right, right. If you were in Bloemfontein this weekend, or Pretoria for that matter, and you have any pictures, please send them through to us at mysport.sport24.co.za and we'll include them in our gallery and check Superbrew to see how you did compared to us this weekend.